It's somehow especially wonderful. I mean, Balaram's appearance day, Krishna's appearance day, and Radharani's appearance day. So the, the, the topic this evening is Radharani part one. Tomorrow evening, I'm going to be conducting a class with the Chinese devotees. It's going to be a different presentation than I'm going to uh, show or speak about on Sunday. No, excuse me, on Friday. So it's Radharani, Radharani, Radharani. Radharani. We won't get tired of Radharani. She won't get tired of us either. Here's a little bit uh, the intention of, of covering topics. Childhood pastimes, youthful pastimes, playful pastimes. And many of you know the celebrated verse. Does anyone know it from memory, the celebrated verse where... Um, the, the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Radha and Krishna. Radha, Krishna, Pranaya, Vikritir, Ladini, Shakti, Rasmat. Anyone know the verse? We can say it together, because there it is on the screen. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Ladini Shakti Rasmat Ekat Manavapi Bhuvi Pura Dehad Bedam Gatau Tau Chaitanyakyam Prakatam Aduna Tadvayam Chaikyam Aptam Radha Bhava Duti Savalitam Naomi Krishna Surupam Of course, this is describing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's position. The loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure-giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, previously they separated themselves. Now, these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. So this is a little bit on the Radha Tattva. She is the Ladini Shakti portion of Krishna's spiritual potency. Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dvi Deha Dhari Anyonye Vilasa Rasa Asvadana Kari Radha and Krishna are one and the same, but they have assumed two bodies. Thus they enjoy each other, tasting the mellows of love. Not that we don't know these things, but hearing them and hearing them and hearing them. It's nice to hear them again and again. Again, this is the purport of that verse. The two transcendentalists, Radha and Krishna, are a puzzle to the materialists. The description of Radha and Krishna from the diary of Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami is a condensed explanation, but one needs great spiritual insight to understand the mystery of these two personalities. Mm -hmm. It is a mystery. Krishna's unlimited, this is his Swarup Shakti, his spiritual potencies, unlimited. 
but for sake of consideration, there's his antaranga, or his surup shakti, his bahiranga, or external energy, and tatasta shakti. But the internal energy, the surup shakti, or chit shakti, has its parts. Sandini, samvit, and ladini. Or the existential potency, the knowledge potency, and the pleasure potency. So the text reads, Krishna's aspect of eternal existence. And this Sandini Shakti manifests the forms of, and the paraphernalia of, and the abode of the Supreme Lord. They are manifest, the forms are the manifestation of Sandini. Samvit is Krishna's aspect of cognizance, the knowledge potency by which the Lord knows himself and causes others to know him. If you want to know Krishna, you better get close to that Sambit Shakti. But how do you get access to the Sambit Shakti? Through the Ladini Shakti. Krishna's aspect of transcendental bliss. That is, through the medium of devotional service, one can get access to the Sambit Shakti. And to understand Krishna through the medium of devotional service. Ladi nira sara prema prema sara bhava bhavera paramakashta nama mahabhava The essence of the ladini potency is love of God. The essence of love of God is emotion. Bhava. And the ultimate development of emotion is Mahabhava. Now these are series of verses connected to one another from Adi Lila chapter 4. Mahabhava Sarupa Sri Radha Takarani Sarvaguna Kani Krishna Kanta Shiromani Sri Radha Takarani is the embodiment of Mahabhava. She is the repository of all good qualities and the crest jewel among all the lovely consorts of Lord Krishna. This is Radha Tattva. Krishna Prema Bhavita Yanra Chitendriya Kaya Krishna Dirja Shakti Radha Kridhara Sahaya Her mind, senses and body are steeped in love for Krishna she is Krishna's own energy, and she helps him in his pastimes. Radhika Hayena Krishnera Pranaya Vikara Sarup Shakti Ladini Nama Yanhara Shimati Radhika is the transformation of Krishna's love. She is his internal energy called Ladini. Ladini Karaya Krishna Asnandavasa Andas Badana Ladini Ladini Dvara Kare Bhaktera Poshana that Ladini energy gives Krishna pleasure and nourishes his devotees. I mean, look at Prabhupada's dancing. <laughs> his dhoti is dancing. <laughs> and the devotees are clapping while Prabhupada's dancing and he looks very happy, connected to the Ladini potency. You want to chant the... Krishna Kanta Gana Dekhi Tri Vidha Prakar Krishna Kanta Gana Dekhi Tri Vidha Prakar Akilakshi Gana Pure Mohishi Gana 
The beloved consorts of Lord Krishna are of three kinds. The goddesses of fortune, the queens, and the milkmaids of Braja, who are the foremost of all. These consorts all proceed from Radhika. Very important verse. Next. Avatari Krishna jaiche kare avatar Amshini radha hoite tin ganer vistar Just as the fountainhead Lord Krishna is the cause of all incarnations, so Sri Radha is the cause of all these consorts. Govinda Nandini Radha Govinda Mohini Govinda Sarvasho Sarbo Kanta Shiramani Radha is the one who gives pleasure to Govinda and she is also the enchantress of Govinda. She is the be-all and end-all of Govinda and the crest jewel of all his consorts. So that was the topic of Radha Tattva. There's more in that whole chapter 4. There's four examples of Radha's appearance pastime. And how is that possible? It's possible because there's different days of Brahma, Kalpa Beda, and during different days of Brahma, she appears in different ways. And the one I'm least familiar with, but it's written in rather nice detail, it was Ramananda Roy Padyavali. So here's the translation. Is this Bengali? Yeah? Please. So there we see Vrishabhanu leaning over and seeing Radha floating on a lotus flower. One day, Maharaj Rishabhanu, or Bhikkhavanu, arrived upon the Jamuna's banks, and after having been moving around here and there during a royal expedition, he saw a lotus flower, resplendent like the rays of the sun, floating down the stream. Dekhi Priko Bhanu Raja Monete Anunde Padmake Dekhiya Bale Atanto Bishade Keaniya Paddo Diba Prithi Bit Prithi Dipya Tare Atoboli Priko Bhanu Kahoi Shabha Shatbhare Seeing the lotus, his mind became full of bliss, and yet he simultaneously fell into deep despair. He thought, and spoke aloud, How can this divine lotus be brought to the shore? Shuniya Chakoragan Kehuna Shunila Rai Ramananda Prabhu Charone Shevila. Although his servants heard what the king had uttered, no one could speak. Ramananda Roy aspires to serve his feet. Mone Mone Raja Bhaleni Koreke Aniya Mon Diba More. Something's missing. <laughs> In his internal vision, Rai Ramananda asks the king, Shall I fetch this lotus? Bhikabhanu Raja Tabe Uti Anandite Ashru Uturi Raja Cholila Turite. Jomuna Redesh Raja Purila Turite Kalindi Lahori Ute Gagonero Gote An Enri Pandri 
রাজা করতে ধারিলা পদ্মকে লাইয়ান পদ্মকে লইয়ান তবে কুলেতে মিলিলা In great bliss, Maharaj Rishabhanu swiftly dismounted from his steed and jumped into the Jamuna, swimming amidst waves that seemed to touch the sky. He caught hold of the lotus and brought it to the shore. Rai Ramananda vale radha janamite, shuphal hoi ba priti radha ke dekhite. Rai Ramananda speaks of Radha's appearance and how the world is now crowned with success by beholding the vision of Radhika. What can possibly compare to the beauty of celebration of the appearance of Srimati Radharani's Vrishabhanu's abode? should be at, right? So, not connected with Ramananda Roy's description, but connected with one of the other descriptions, Narada Muni, knowing that Krishna has appeared, understood that also Radharani must have appeared. So he came to find and see Srimati Radharani in her little, little, little newborn child form because that pastime doesn't exist in Goloka. We'll hear some more about that pastime coming up. Here's a nice photograph, a painting, of Krishna coming to see Srimati Radharani. Now, there's a similar pastime. Yeah. In, in, the, in the description of Ramananda Roy's writing, um, Yasoda came to visit her dear friend Kirtida because she had just a newborn son and Kirtida had a newborn daughter and they were dear friends, so she came to visit her dear friend. And when she placed Krishna down next to Radharani, Krishna began to cry. And in his writing, he also indicates, Ramananda Roy indicates, that when it was time for Krishna's appearance in this world, he spoke to Radharani and requested her, you please also appear. Radharani was reluctant because she didn't want to see anyone other than Krishna. And Krishna assured her, don't worry, you will always see me. And that promise from Krishna, Radharani accepted on the condition that on earth the first person she would see would be Krishna. So Krishna kept his word by Mother Jasoda visiting the home of Kirtida and placing Krishna by the side of Radharani. She was very happy and he was very happy. Amazing pastime. There's a similar pastime a description of Vrishabhanu finding Radha in Varsana at a place called Vrishabhanu Kund. Different, but quite similar. And the most, um, well, in Montreal, Srila Prabhupada gave a discussion about the appearance of Krishna. And the devotees, when they heard the, the pastime being narrated by Prabhupada about the appearance of Krishna, they thought he got mixed up. It was, it's from Matsya Purana. And when Vrishabhanu 
was plowing the field, which is a part of a, a tradition or a, a ritual. When a yagya is going to be performed, the person on whose behalf the yagya is going to be performed, he plows the area where the yagya is going to be performed. And when he was plowing the field, lo and behold, the female child came out of the earth. And that female child he accepted as his daughter. Matsya Purana. And then there's another description, very complicated description, given by Rupa Goswami in Lalita Madhava. And it has to do with Agastya Muni. It starts with Agastya Muni detecting pride in the Vindhya Hills. Agastya was visiting in, tra- in, in his um, asceticism. He was traveling here and there. When he came to the Vindhya Hills, he s- detected pride. Vindhya offered obeisances, and he said, very good, you stay that way until I return. And he didn't return. So, Vindhya was now doing austerities and austerities and austerities and austerities. After long austerities, there was a benediction given to the Vindhya Hills that they they would give birth to a female child. And when Putana was searching for children, she happened to visit the Vindhya Hills and she kidnapped Radharani and some other young girls. And as she was traveling through the sky, she was halted. And when she was halted, she dropped the female child. And the female child, this is a photograph of a very humble place that is said to be the, the birthplace of Srimati Radharani, complete with cows and calves and so forth. And this is the deity on the altar. Srimati Radharani. Of course, there's Radha Krishna deities as well on the altar. And tomorrow we're going to be discussing some of Srimati Radharani's childhood pastimes. So I'll just narrate some. There's, there's so many. Childhood pastimes of Srimati Radharani. She had a natural attraction because she's Krishna's eternal um, pleasure potency. She had a natural attraction for Krishna. And yet at the same time, she was shy. And so it was a little difficult for her to approach Krishna. We're going to see, you know, there's a very nice painting. It's a, it's a verse from Padyavali. And in pa- Padyavali, Padyavali is a, a series of um, statements or poems or praises or glorifications, verses gathered by Rupa Goswami, but one particular one is by Sri Rupa Manjari speaking to Radha, saying, please give up this shyness because I know your heart. So this is, who is Rupa Goswami in Krishna Leela? Sri Rupa Manjari. Who is Sri Rupa Manjari? Sri Rupa Manjari is the principal Manjari assistant of Lalita Devi. And Lalita Devi amongst the Ashtasakis is the most intimately connected with Radharani. Therefore, Sri Rupa Manjari has access to Krishna and Krishna's heart 
unlike anyone else, and his writings indicate it, Rupa Goswami. So there's a very beautiful painting where Sri Rupa Manjari is placing her arm around Radharani's arm and saying, My dear Radharani, I know that you have such love for Krishna, but why are you being shy like this? It, the, 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 the words say, uh, when you give an elephant, you don't give the elephant without, you know, you don't, you don't hold the elephant back with the elephant goad to hold the elephant. So you, the, the, tra- the person that you're giving the gift to can't have access to the elephant. So please go to Krishna, although you're, you're very shy. Many of the pastimes of Srimati Radharani we hear after she was given in marriage to Abhimanyu. And <laughs> I'm picturing in my mind hearing Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj narrate the pastime of Krishna hearing that Radharani's been married to Abhimanyu. Somebody brings to Krishna a, to some ladu. He said, "Oh, this is very nice ladu. What's the occasion?" <laughs> In our village, someone just became married. Oh, who just became became married? Radharani married Abhimanyu. <laughs> Krishna spat out the ladu. Horrible. <laughs> but of course, it's pastime. And, you know, these things, for materialists, they don't understand pastime. They don't understand Krishna at all, what to speak of Krishna's pastimes. But the, the, the pastimes of Krishna include um, things that enable him to experience a mood of love that, or, by, by worldly standards, is not to be done. Krishna's attraction for Radha and Radha's attraction for Krishna outside of marriage is a no-no. But on the other hand, it enhances the happiness that they experience. It's simply loving pastime. It's simply loving pastime. There's a description in the childhood pastimes of Radharani where uh, Nanda Maharaj is with Krishna taking care of the cows in a distant place. And all of a sudden, it starts to have a, there's a big, big rainstorm. And in the big rainstorm, Nanda Maharaj has two concerns, protecting the cows and his little son Krishna. Sometimes you're, as parents or anyone, you're torn between two loving objects and what to do. Just at that time, just at that time, the Radharani came. And he was thinking, Radharani, together with Krishna, they can make their way back to Nanda Bhavan. And so I can send Radharani with Krishna back to Nanda Bhavan and I can take care of the cows. And so little Radharani and little Krishna started under Nanda Maharaj's direction going back to Nanda, Nanda's palace. And as they were walking, they both transformed into youths. And as they were transformed into youths, Lord Brahma came with all the paraphernalia for their wedding. There's a very celebrated place Bandiravan, thank you. Bandiravan. It's one of Dina, Bandu, Dina Bandu's favorite places in taking us or taking devotees to. Big banyan tree. He has 
a very affectionate relationship with the family that lives nearby, and they get all excited when Dino Bandhu comes and brings lots of people, and they distribute prasadam, and you know, they're very, very happy, and he's very happy, and it's bridge bossy, loving dealings. And he tells the whole story. So later, the paraphernalia, the, the wedding took place, Radha and Krishna were married before the marriage with Abhimanyu, but it was a nobody knew it marriage. You know, Lord Brahma, who's going to believe that Lord Brahma came and married Radha and Krishna when they're little? But they were married. In Bandiravan. There's a nice platform where that took place. Nice paintings of that pastime too. So the the pastime that they were not married, in fact, Radharani was married to Abhimanyu, then so many, 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 many pastimes. So many pastimes. Here's one that I like very much. Abhimanyu kept hearing rumors that Krishna is coming to take company of Radharani, my wife. So he decided he was going to leave Vrindavan. But before leaving Vrindavan, he had to take permission from Purnamasi. Because she's, everyone looked up, looks up to Purnamasi. She's the, the mother of Sandipani Muni, a and, and very senior Brahmani Mataji, and everyone looks up to her. So he asked, may I have your blessings? I want to leave Vrindavan. Why? because I'm hearing all these stories of Radha and Krishna meeting. And how can there be so many stories? He hears so many if there's nothing to it. And Purnamasi, of course, didn't want Radha to leave Vrindavan. So he, she said, don't believe the rumors and don't be disturbed by rumors. I'll tell you what, if you can catch them red-handed, then I give you my permission. You can leave Vrindavan. He said, that's, that's very reasonable. I'll catch them red-handed. And then he said, I have a second request. What's that? My dear friend Govardhan Mala has become rich because his wife, Chandravali, worships Gauri. So can you teach Radha how she can worship Gauri so I can become rich? Sure, I can teach Radha how to worship Gauri. Very nice. So Radharani, under the authority of her husband, is going to go to Gorikund. Gorikund is a place that's on the western side of Govardhan Hill. So it's some distance away from uh, her home but that's okay. She went to walking with Gauri, to, towards Gauri Kun, carrying paraphernalia for worshiping Gauri. And who should she meet along the way but Krishna? And Krishna bl blocked her way, teasing her and not letting her pat walk along the path. So Radharani was a little uppity, you know, get out of my way, what are you doing? I'm on my way to worship Gauri. And if once he understood what her purpose was, he let her go. And he found Vrindadevi, Radha, Krishna found Vrindadevi and asked Vrindadevi to make a Gauri costume for him. <laughs> so that when Radharani came, there was Gauri in front of the Gauri deity. Now, Vrishabhanu heard and that Krishna is going to meet Radharani at Gauri Kund, at the, the Gauri temple. So Jatila came along to, to, to catch them red-handed because Purnamasi said, if you can catch them red-handed, you can leave Vrindavan. So he wants to catch them red-handed. And um, Jatila's there looking at Radharani as Radharani's paying her obeisances before the 
gori, who is standing in front of the gori deity, and saying, aha, I've, I've caught you. And gori, in the deity form, makes some very strong accusations, jatila, you this and you that, and you're abhimanyo, your son, you're outrageous, and says many heavy things to them. And Radharani is, you know, very happy because she understands the Leela because she actually wants to meet with Krishna. And it's a funny ending. I forget exactly how it ends. Pastimes that are like playful and mysterious and may sound like, you know, nice stories that you want to tell children so they're very attracted and peaceful and happy and charmed with the intrigue of a nice pastime. But it's not just a story. It's Krishna has many, many, many wonderful ways of enjoying pastimes with his devotees and with Srimati Radharani in particular and the gopis. Now my thought was that I would spend some, some time tomorrow uh, discussing more of these pastimes with nice paintings and going through the whole thing. So I think I'll do that. And see if there's anyone here that wants to narrate one of their favorite Radharani pastimes or ask any questions or have some discussion, if you'd like. Krishna left Vrindavan and went to Mathura at the age of 12. So these uh, pastimes with the in-laws, Jatila Kutila, and these covert rendezvous between Radha and Krishna, they're happening when they're very young. Yes. Or is it that just like um, the appearance of Radharani is narrated in different ways and different ages, Yeah. is it that in the different pastimes, you know, uh, Krishna goes to Vrindavan and there are other pastimes where he doesn't. And then there's, you know, at least in the paintings that are painted of these pastimes, Radha and Krishna don't look like they're 12 or under. Uh, of course, they're... Well, that's the artists. But it is also said specifically by... Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur really gets into it about how old was Krishna when Krishna left to go to Mathura. It's 11 years, 8 months. No, 10 years, 8 months. 11 years, 8 months. My memory is bad. Um... And he, he works it backwards from when, I'll, I'll get to your question, but he works it backwards from when it's traditional for Kshatriyas to have their son, have their Upanayana and get formal training. So that happened at the right time, and then he went after Upanayana ceremony because he was off taking care of cows. And then he went to Sunday Panimoni school. So that was, if my memory is right, that was when he was 12. So 11 years, 8 months, something like that. So, however, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that he was um, physically mature much more than his age. Now, exactly what that means, because th these personalities... Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and Rupa Goswami, etc., 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 Raghunath Das Goswami, they have the capacity 
to directly experience Krishna's pastimes. They're revealed to them and they write about them. So how, do, how does he know that his, his, his form looked like that of a youth instead of young, so young, because of his realization? So the, paint, the, the artists paint whatever they paint. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur indicates his appearance and his emotion and so forth was like that of a 16-year-old. So often Prabhupada would say 16, but his age was actually less. So his form and his emotions and his speech and his, his everything was like a 16-year-old, although he was younger. How's that? And another question, Gabaraj. Um, Abhimanyu has this uh, role to play in Krishna's pastime. Yes, he does. Of being the hurdle. Is there um, an equivalent in, in Lord Chaitanya's Leela? Or, you know, does he have a part to play? Hmm. You know, your question is, who in, 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 in Gora Leela, who is Abhimanyu? That's your question? Yes, or is there a similar kind of, you know, personality that puts these hurdles in Lord Chaitanya's Leela? Well, make... Jatila, Katila, and Abhimanyu, all three of them. Most likely, because all of the... I'd, ha I'd have to look it up, but it's, nothing comes to mind just sitting here. Should I look it up right now? You would like much. <laughs> you, you get your... Huh? In the car. In your car. Go ahead. <laughs> you know where to look, right? Gorna Ganitesh Tipika. Yes. Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, in the you, I think in one of the slides it said there was like four appearance pastimes. Yes. You want you should we do them again? So I, I yeah I think maybe I missed one. I there's one where she appears on the lotus and one. Well, there's the lotus on in the Jamuna River. There's a lotus at Vishabhanu Kund. That's two. The Matsya Purana example of plowing the field. And then Rupa Goswami's Alita Madhava description. Here's another, number five. The, the number five is when we visit um, where is it? The place where Radharani appeared. Where is it? Where is it? Painting. Huh? Yes, there we go. Right alongside, uh, you, there's the, the bus on the right side, and there's some devotees, and there's Radharani's temple. Alongside that side is the dry riverbed where at one time the Jamuna River flowed. And Vishabhanu every morning would go to take his morning bath in the Jamuna River, right next to his house or palace. And one morning as he was wading into the Jamuna River, he saw a lotus flower that was 
you know, the early morning hours, it was glowing bright, very brightly. So he went over and much to his amazement, there was a little golden girl in the lotus flower, you know, similar to those other images. And as he waded out into the water to see what that was, he, by touching Radharani, his whole body became charged with ecstasy. So he accepted the child, brought the child back to Kirtida, and said, let us accept this daughter as our daughter. And so that's an appearance. So this, this other painting is, shows Narada Muni showing up, wherever that one is. There it is. Narada Muni, the, it's, and this is the part of the narration, Narada Muni reasoned Radha must have appeared. So he went as a sannyasi, not as Narada Muni, but as a sannyasi throughout the whole of Braja, searching for a newborn girl. And he didn't find. Find he came to Vrishabhanu's home. And he asked, do you have any newborn children? Well, we have a young boy. And he's, he said, very nice, I'd like to give my blessings to this young boy. So it was his, her older brother. And do you have any girls? He said, well, there's one girl, but she's blind, deaf, and dumb. But you're a sadhu. Maybe there's something you can do to help her overcome that being blind, deaf, and dumb. So he said, take me to the place where your, your daughter is. And as soon as he walked into the room, his body was surcharged with transcendental bliss. And he said, I know, I know mantras, and I know some special rituals, but you'll have to give me complete privacy. Sure, sure, you, you're, you're, you're a sadhu, a sannyasi. So he closed the door and immediately paid obeisances and began worshiping Srimati Radharani to its heart's content and chanting mantras. And when that ex exercise was all done, to his heart's content worshiping the infant form of Srimati Radharani, he left the room and said, I did all the rituals, and now I have one final recommendation for you. You have a big festival. This is shortly after her birth. It's traditional anyways. Invite all the exalted families. Make sure you invite Nanda and Jasoda and have them bring their son, and everything will be nice. You'll see. So they brought, and... While everyone, all the adults are busy doing adult things, little Krishna toddled his way into where Radharani was and peered over the top of her crib. And as soon as he peered over the top of her crib, she cried out. She opened her eyes. The blind, deaf, and dumb Radharani didn't want to see, hear, or speak anything other than Krishna. So that's number five. And then they heard her cry and they came running that, oh, this sannyasi, he did wonders. He's taken our daughter who was blind, deaf, and dumb to a position now she can see and make noise. Big festival. Five. Found reference only for Jatila. Lord Chaitanya himself did not accept that Ramachandra Puri was the incarnation of Vibhishana, but Lord himself said that Ramachandra Puri was the empowered incarnation of Srimati Radharani's mother-in-law, Jatila. This Ramachandra Puri restricted Lord Chaitanya in his acceptance of arms. Whose question was that? That was your question? You know the Ramchandra Puri pastime. Anyone here not know the Ramchandra Puri pastime? Have you, you don't know. You want to narrate the Ramchandra Puri pastime? If you don't want to, I, I don't want you to be nervous. You want to narrate? No? 
Okay, okay. I'm, I've been engaging in, in such a way that participation in discussion is nice. Even if I have to do some corrections and the, you know, at the end. So, Ram Chandra Puri was initiated disciple of Ishwara Puri. No. Ram Chandra Puri was initiated disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri, I'm looking at you because you raised your hand. Madhav, you know who Madhavendra Puri is, right? Madhavendra Puri had some disciples. Ishwara Puri became Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. Ram Chandra Puri was also a disciple. And Ramchandra Puri, when he heard Madhavendra Puri reciting a verse over and over and over and over and over and over again in the mood of loving separation, how unfortunate I am, I've, you know, Krishna has gone in the mood of the gopis, Ramchandra Puri criticized him to him, to his face. Why are you doing this? So Imadavendra Puri said, get out of here. I don't want to see your face ever again. If I die seeing your face, I'm, my destiny is dark. Leave me and don't come back. Something to that effect. So Ramchandra Puri had this, had lost the grace of Madhavendra Puri, but he didn't lose his tendency to find fault. And it grew and grew and grew. And so when Ramchandra Puri came to visit Jagannath Puri, and he was busy trying to find fault with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this and that, you eat too much, you don't eat enough. There's ants crawling, that means you've, got, you've eaten too many sweets. And, you know, because... He is the god brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's spiritual master. He said nothing. There's this nice painting. Ramchandra Puri is kneeling on the floor, pointing at ants. Mahaprabhu was silent because his business was finding fault. And so that's the connection. An empowered manifestation of Jatila who was also very busy in finding fault. Obstruction of Lord Chaitanya's pastime. But in, in Krishna's pastime, it was joyful. It increased the happiness. We'll, we'll discuss some of those pastimes tomorrow. Yes, Varsana. One, I was wondering if we can get access to that Ramananda Raya's, uh, this, the verses that were recited. Yes, you liked? I loved it. Uh, can I'll we... give you a copy. Okay. Thank you. And the second thing was, uh, you know, we've heard that in the Goloka, there is this feeling that a demon might be coming to increase the rasa, but although there is no real demons in Goloka, and so I'm drawing parallel to that, to this Abhimanyu's um, pastime here, where I've heard that Abhimanyu actually does not ever see Radharani. And well, he sees Radharani, but he doesn't touch her. Doesn't touch her, okay. So it is actually a, that Abhimanyu is a real... He's a real person. Okay. I mean, different things are said by different acharyas. He's the manifestation of Krishna's shadow and things like that. But he's a person. And they're married. In Leela, they're married. So-called married to so-called husband. 
Ramaswamy, um, I, I, I read Navabraj in my every night to my children. So in that, he was in that book. It says how Abhimanyu is very much attached to money. Yes. Counting the number of cows. Number he has. of cows. And I, so that's what he's obsessed about. Yes, that Not was so his. That was Radha. his obsession. That's why he wanted Radha to worship Gauri. He had wealth, like Govardhan Mala did. Com you know, competition. Wealth, cows, prestige. Yeah. Yes, in the back. Um, hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, so, um, um, are there any verses in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam? I'm sure there might be many. Um, uh, describing uh, the beauty of uh, Srimati Radharani how she used to le look, detail, beauty, and then what she used to wear. Uh, are there any verses in Srimad Bhagavatam? I'm sure there are. I'm, I'm, I'm much more familiar with the descriptions of our acharyas than in Srimad Bhagavatam. Following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I mean, Radha, certainly Radharani is indicated, particularly she's indicated when Uddhava comes to visit and the her her talks with the bumblebee, her dis discussion of madness and her the, the, the intensity of the kind of love that she had. But the kinds of descriptions that, that you're asking for, what she looked like, how she dressed, etc., those are nice questions. I'm I'm not familiar with any places in the Bhagavatam where that's it's done to that extent, but our acharyas, you know, in great detail, very great poetic detail. Something more. Yeah, I I would like to know. Uh, Speak into the microphone. Uh, actually, um, uh, I would like to know. I mean, wh where it is like. Um, sometimes, like I feel like uh, meditating on the verses. So. Um, on the which verses. On on Srimati Radharani uh, while reading uh, something, I don't know uh, where it is exactly because I'm not that. I don't. I haven't read so many uh, so many uh, cantos till now, um, but uh, um, while meditating on Krishna, um, like in tenth canto, it's there. Barha pidam natavarpuhu. So that that actually encourages me uh, very well. So uh, um, I have a desire uh, if I could read. Maybe like it's like too much for me, but. Um, I, I like to meditate on the verses and uh, I got that. So what what's what's the where is this going? You want to know where to go to to find out more about the how Radharani looks and how she dresses? Yeah. From, specifically from Srimad Bhagavatam. I can okay. point you to many, many places where it's not in Srimad sure. Bhagavatam. Okay. By our by our acharyas. You start with Rupa Goswami. He's the leader. Yes. And then following Rupa Goswami. Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami, sure. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, etc. And you like to meditate on the verses. In, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, for sure, and the end, that because that's a very, that's nectar devotion, has references with verses of her, of her descriptions of her activities. And her appearance, and her dress, and her beauty, and things like that. Because of your question, I'm thinking, you know, because it's Radhas to me, 
Maybe I should gather some verses and just circulate verses and ask the devotees if they're interested, they can look over some verses and meditate from our acharyas on verses that are describing her qualities and her form and her beauty and her dress and her ornaments. Would that be all right? Okay. Okay, yes. Raj, tomorrow is Lalita Sashti also. I was wondering if you could say something that we can how to offer prayers to Lalita Devi and what could be something that we can ask. I don't know how to offer prayers to Lalita Devi. Just hearing the, the descriptions. Sure, I'll do something. I've you? got more homework. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absorbed in Madhvacharya and now it's Lalita and Radharani's dress and ornaments. Go ahead. My thoughts are still uh, continuing with the question I asked. Um, in, an, in Krishna's Leela, Abhimanyu Jatila Kutila, their um, slander of Krishna is playful. Yes. It's taken in jest. It's not offensive. So to even be involved in Krishna's leelas, these are obviously great devotees. Oh, yes. So they have a particular role to play. Yes. However, in Lord Chaitanya's leela, the same personality is not. comes and it's offensive because there seems to be malice in the heart. Yes, that's right. How is that? We have this perfected soul that now is being offensive in Lord Chaitanya's Leela. Well, he has a role to play because what's Lord Chaitanya doing in, in that manner? He's modeling or teaching by example how a great personality deals with somebody who is an offender. So presumably, what to speak of Lord Chaitanya, he, he, well, what his spiritual master, he's offending. In this case, at least in terms of relationship, this is a disciple of his godbrother. But he's ready to offend his spiritual master. What, what's the problem with, you know, being a fault finder? So it's, it's modeling also the perils of being a fault finder. So he has a role to play. And yes, there's malice. It's, it's not that Jatila, Kutila, and Abhimanyu are thinking, oh, let's, let's play this part on stage because it'll make Krishna happy. So we'll just speak like this and behave like this. My mind is going to the so many nice pastimes that they're involved with to, in, to an enhance Krishna's pleasure. But having obstacles enhances Krishna's pleasure. You know, when, when Srimati Radharani, because we'll be hearing, when she, Srimati Radharani enters into a mood of anger, Krishna likes it. Now, when she's in the mood of anger, you know, go back to your the premise. Is there malice? There's love. But it's a loving dealing. From Radharani to Krishna, it's a loving dealing. She's not, she's not necessarily thinking, let me behave hard to get. When I behave hard to get, Krishna's going to like it. It's not her contemplation. She's... She is Krishna's pleasure potency acting in concert with Krishna. And her love her love for Krishna is superlative. 
And so she does what she does and says what she says and so forth and so on for Krishna's pleasure. But she's, here's an, in, in one drama, gosh, Radharani becomes angry and she leaves and Krishna's devastated because Radharani's gone and she left in a pout. So Purnamasi goes looking for her and Purnamasi finds her. She's in a cabin somewhere in the forest and she's at the door or the window or something hearing Radharani speaking to herself. Why do I get like this? My heart is only filled with him and I get into these moods and I just behave and speak in such a bad way and why do I do this? And Purnamasi is overhearing her speak like this and comes in and, oh, Radharani, let me make things nice, come with me. And she brings her back to Krishna and everything's nice. It's just a, you know, a, a loving sentiment, but you know the material reflection is harsh and the loving manner or no, loving display is the reality. And it's it's loving. It's not otherwise. But it's it's you know, it's it looks otherwise. It's not exactly the same because you know the the, the love of Jatila and Katila and Abhimanyu for Radha is not the same as Krishna's love for Radharani, Radharani's love for Krishna. But it's part of the drama, and they have a they have a role to play. And that expression was the, a partial expansion. Jatila is a partial expansion. Uh, empowered, incarnation. Em, empowered incarnation. To facilitate Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Okay, let's end. Bring your drum tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jaya.